Good morning. Good, morning. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome everyone to this time of reflection. We'll begin our time together with the five o'clock mantra of the new group of world servers. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May I fulfill my part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. Oh. Greetings, dear friends. Today is the last day of the five days period of the Sagittarius Solar Festival. Sagittarius is the sign of direction and silent reflection, linking with the goal, assessing the path forward. These five days, we've been meditating in the privacy of our, our own retreat or with a group and maybe with many groups, but together we stand in united as the world servers. Connecting with the vision trying to clarify the path forward for humanity for the group and for each of us individually. Today we come together to share our impressions of this meditation and bring them into the group chalice lifting it to the energies of Sagittarius and asking for the blessings from the spiritual elders. This full moon is also special because this is the first year of the seven year period. And in a way, we, through each full moon, we tra trail blazing, distributing the energy of the festival week that impulse that we together received a year ago. And we planning our work ahead for the next seven years. And also, as we all know, this is a special year as the very significant astrological conjunctions happening with two luminaries, two sacred planets coming together in a beautiful dance, Saturn and Jet Jupiter meeting in Aquarius, opening the path for the new Renaissance for humanity. So today we share our impressions and we suggest uh, three segments for our sharing sharing on any impressions that came to us on the 
vision of the direction for humanity? What are the next right thing for humanity? The second segment, what is, what are the next right thing for the World Service Group? For us all together, who knowingly or unknowingly that serve the same purpose, helping humanity in its path of evolution. And the third segment, what are the next right thing for us individually? This is an open space. So we just proceed in a flowing, structurally flowing manner. Uh, sharing, and if there are no sharing, we will hold a space of silence. Visualizing and imagining the chalice of the group where we bring our impressions, our thoughts, our ideas, verbally or silently. So let's begin. Um, Sharon, if you could give us some note for our first segment. Second. So we invite us to hold this space and when anyone ready, please unmute yourself and we can activate our webcam. So not activate, it's up to us. Uh, if you're ready to speak, please raise your hand and share. This is uh, Sheldon, and um, <clears throat> speaking of the net right thing or things for humanity, um, my focus has been on building a sharing economy. And my meditation about this, or just the thought about how one might meditate about this, has been working with the idea that DK put forth several different places in his writings, but it, it goes something like this, that humanity in the past has learned primarily through pain and suffering. And it will learn more and move faster upon the way when it learns through joy and victory. And my thought about this has been that we have, when we think about our conditions today on the planet, uh, and sharing meaning coming together, sharing our ideas, our thoughts, our money. Um, um, on the one hand, um, encouraged by the kind of pain and suffering and the opportunity offered by this pandemic. 
So without going into any more detail, the outworking of this pandemic, as we are almost forced to cooperate, and when we see some cooperation between countries sharing resources, ideas, perhaps a lot of sharing of practices has gone on, maybe even vaccines, we may begin to feel a little bit of the joy of, of that as a solution to this problem. But this problem has arisen because we didn't share in the first place. One country pulls out of the world health groupings and um, other countries begin to do their own thing. At the same time, we have a number of activities that are taking place uh, throughout the world where groups do work together and are sharing their ideas and thoughts for best practice. And when something arises, something works out and is noticed, gets picked up, put online, don't we feel like this is the way ahead? There is a joy about the fact that we not only are cooperating, but we're sharing and we're doing something new and different in a, in a new way. I am taking this symbolic re-election of Joe Biden as the next president of the United States as a symbol of this possibility and probability given his background. So that's one thing that I, I, I see ahead and I see, I feel joy. I can see a number of different kinds of things which, which will come forth um, and over, over, overtake the oppositions, some of the opposition that's been so present between the two political parties at this country. So I would just have us consider where we do see these kinds of victories of, of sharing of ideas, of money being taken from one, one place and, and given to another just to survive, just to have food. And to some of us that brings tears of joy, others it's like, what was taking us so long? So I'm just gonna, I'm just, want to end with saying that as we notice these kinds of breaking throughs to sharing between countries, between groups, um, different kind of use for money in the world, as it, as it can play its, its rightful role as a medium of exchange so all can benefit and rise. Um, that's that rising wave. And uh, I would suggest that one thing we can focus on or several things we can focus on from the perspective of sharing economy coming through as a result of joy and victory. Thank you, Sheldon. Definitely the learning through suffering seems to be one of the most efficient ways for us humanity to learn something still, unfortunately. Hopefully one day this method will be superseded by the methods to learning through recognition, conscious recognition. And that's way ahead of us. Thank you.
that welcome. Please unmute yourself. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I just want to say a quick word. First, heartfelt gratitude for uh, Saturday's webinar and both the music and the silence. So just really touched the heart as well as the sharings. And as Sheldon was just sharing what's already happening and pointing out a few things, I found myself over these past couple of days reflecting on the fact that many of us who are in this room right now, in fact, have been working for a, a relatively long time in a single incarnation, helping to bring forth and land, ground, uh, through form, through ideas, and through the law of creative manifestation, not in that order. Uh, many of the institutions and the opportunities uh, that we are aware of that support the laws and principles. And in fact, I just want to say, let's not take that for granted. I mean, I hope Nancy will speak about Cosmos and Cosmos Journal, and not, not only the contribution, but we know that a huge next step is expansion of consciousness for humanity. Well, I would submit that's underway. And we are already seeing the heart center of humanity awakening in profound and breathtaking ways. Um, just to mention one relatively new thing on the planet, codes for a healthy earth. It's, I'll put it in the chat, codes uh, dot earth. And they are going to be releasing a proposed water law where we all agree and uh, again, Cosmos Journal was ahead of the game and putting all that at that out way back, but that with shared water rights and Sheldon speaking of sharing, uh, we don't go to war with one another if we've signed something that says we both need the water that we share because it's a life source. So again, the point here that besides gratitude is that we actually are well underway with humanity's next steps. And it's the story of our evolution and we're the storytellers. And let us continue to name that and claim that and inspire with that and continue our cooperation and collaboration together uh, as we take these next steps in this amazing moment on the planet. So grateful to be on the journey with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dot. One of the things that vividly came as an impression during this period of full moon reflection was that unity, true unity, can be manifested as a result of 
soul consciousness. appearing in humanity. Only through soul recognition in each other we will know the unity as a fact. Without that our attempts to create unity in humanity will be just another way to set up contracts, beneficial contracts, contracts that have good motive and intentions But when conditions change, those contracts might fail. And the agreements, laws only the unity can survive and maintained for indefinitely if it's based on the inner recognition. And then it just will be recognized need to manifest something that is a fact of consciousness of each of us. And therefore the goal for manifesting unity in humanity is linked to this unstoppable process of revealing soul consciousness. And that's momentary if momentous event within happening within intimacy of own individual experience. And we can see it's happening. So therefore the work is about finding each other, those who got that spark of the soul, who know oneself as a soul and working together to start forming the new tissue of humanity, the conscious tissue of humanity, becoming the conscious self as uh, yesterday at the creative lab on the national souls, uh, Uta shared the words of Roberto Sejuoli that in each nation there should be a group of workers who could stand as a conscious self of a nation the same things happening within humanity. Thank you.
Sasha? Yes, Sharon. Hello. Hi, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't figure out how to raise my hand. Um, so, but this worked. I just unmuted myself. I hope Beautiful. I that. Thank okay. you. Yes. Um, I just have a, a couple of things <clears throat> that I'd like to share. And uh, first, and, and really foremost, um, and from my heart, <clears throat> I'd like to applaud the initiative. It's a uh, wonderful initiative to have a group uh, such as this, trying to wrap the group mind around uh, the next steps. And, and um, from an astrological uh, standpoint, it is um, our present challenge. And so when I saw this on the email, uh, my heart um, just got a little lighter. And I, I just want to so much um, applaud the group initiative. Thank, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I, I've been, I've been um, pondering uh, the energies that are available to us. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is gonna make much sense, um, but I'm going to throw out a few threads uh, into the chalice um, and uh, let them serve for whatever uh, they can. Maybe somebody can pick up a few threads and together we can weave a fabric of more significance and meaning than I have to share. But nonetheless, um, this is what I've been getting is um, uh, the, the value of, of uh, reciprocity keeps coming uh, to mind. And the image of the archer um, pulling back, um, you know, the, the, well, I'm not an archer, <laughs> but, but pulling back the tail of the bow, you know, and as, as far as it can go back, then there is a reciprocal action, right? And um, so I, I, I ponder that quite a bit. And then it leads me to uh, the, the, uh, the growth of trees where as far down as the roots go, uh, uh, there are the reciprocity are is the shoots, the beautiful shoots are. And, and so they, there's an interplay of energy between the roots and the shoots between drawing back the bow and how far the arrow will, will go. And so then I think to myself, the reciprocity of a spiritual approach that we make um, every day uh, or continuously, whatever, um, as a group, always united. And um, uh, the reciprocal, the reciprocity of that and, and that as we together more unitedly uh, pull back in effort to aim, fire, fiery hearted aim at being in conscious and creative and, and constructive cooperation, uh, then it only turns that, that there would be um, a reciprocal approach to us. And so as we prepare for 2025, it seems as though, uh, and, and this is happening, we see it happening. Uh, and this initiative is, is um, and all of its glory is, is part of that uh, united approach. Um, and so then I, I turn around, you know, um, you know, we revolve and tread the ways of, of humanity know the ways of God. And so then I think to myself that, that then as, um, as we become uh, more understanding um, 
of of the ways of humanity, then um, there then would be also a reciprocal approach. Well, I told you this wasn't going to make much sense, <laughs> but the other thread is that I've been trying to wrap my mind around the the wholeness of humanity, and and for me that's that's been quite challenging to 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 say that oh, wow you know even esotericists even students of of the Tibetan are are um, on a personality level are coming up with things that are that are quite polarized, you know? And I say, wow, that's so interesting. But we are united in on a higher level, you know? And so what does that look like when we get up there and we look back down at us? What do what does that look like? You know, and and given that we look that way, then what is our best possible action to take um and so i've been working a lot with with um synthesis and um uh the, the whole idea um my last thing is that that um you know we've been in uh we know that libra is kind of the the sign of the interlude and libra is a ruled uh, uh, has the rulers of Saturn and Uranus, and Saturn and Uranus are both planetary rulers on the personality level of Aquarius, which is what we're trying to bring in the new ways and means of the Aqu Aquarian culture and civilization. Um, so I've been playing with that, and it seems as though with Libra, we tend toward. Um, uh law and uh to balance the scales you know and and um uh, and if we have that rule of law um which is the spiritual ruler of libra you know so so um that that's where that's where we've been always focusing our attention on and, and i mean it's, it's a beautiful place to focus our attention to try to balance the scales on the rule of law but i think an, an, an aquarius is calling us toward toward an independent uh toward you know toward going inward so we each have a rule of law that the heart is said to be the um you know straight knowledge comes from the heart right and so if we each just go about our business with the uh, hands on our heart it gives us more of an Aquarian um, quality of being, perhaps. And um, and my last point is is um, I wanted to tie in a couple of things that Sheldon and Dot and you, Sasha, have contributed in terms of of um, uh, you know telling telling the story, you know, and, or be, and we tell the story as a conscious self, you know, soul conscious, and with a, with a, with a knowing that, that joy is a special wisdom. And it brings me to perhaps that, that, um, uh, that perhaps we need to charge ourselves or to challenge ourselves with each of us within our own, uh, with our own hand on our heart, you know? And so it's not so much that the group endeavor needs to be in, in task form unified, but the, unifi the unification is that we each have our hands on our heart and that we're trying to own, own the narrative. We wanna kind of own the story, the general framework of the story to share with everyone that is in earshot of each of us so that they can fill it in for themselves. And we can then look at how it's being filled in and we ourselves will gain in wisdom from the light uh, that is getting brighter above us as the whole. So 
I think that's all. Those are the various threads. And, and you know, I would just like to close uh, with lots of love and uh, gratitude once again for this initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. There was a raised hand by Catherine Powers. Catherine, please unmute yourself. And then I see Karen has hand raised. I was going to add another uh, thread and talk about shared experience. And uh, people have even talked about one of the ways to move economy is an, an economy of experience. We don't have to add so many things if we could more fully experience you know, the beauty of just enough well-being within the economy. But I think as I started reflecting on shared experience and I thought when uh, Sheldon brought up learning or somebody learning through suffering and so we experience We've had so much shared experience through the COVID. And what if we started sharing the experience of joy? And, and yes, shared experience is a good step for humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Absolutely agree with that. Very resonant. I think someone on the on Saturday also uh, expressed that as big um, experience of our togetherness through this current pandemic is one of the biggest gifts of this year. Uh, Karen, please unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Well, I really appreciated the Saturday webinar that we had. It was fabulous. I And I've been thinking about it since then. But I, I've been asking, and for a long time I've been asking, what is unique that esoteric esotericists can offer that other groups don't? And I've been part of my lifetime of many, many groups and activist groups. 
And what is different, I think, is the, um, well, the meditation and the focus on uh, thought and intention and, and this opportunity that we now have through the technology of unanimous and simultaneous meditations. I think that is incredibly powerful. And I participate in a lot of these, uh, you know, through study and like the, um, uh, well, anyway, many of them, and I pr particularly appreciate the 2025 initiatives, but, um, you know, the, uh, as a new group of uh, World Service, it's through these meditations that we are getting to know one another and establishing lines of communication and connection. And I really see it as, you know, kind of like that song, getting to know you <laughs> across uh, across the globe, because a lot of people, I've met so many people and it's been so enriching. Um, the, the meditating and sharing together is extremely powerful, the power of the group to heal. And, and then, you know, as I participate in the esoteric UN and every day we meditate on a country plus also our own, you know, it's been fabulous because, you know, I have to honestly say, I, some of the, I didn't know some of these countries existed. So learning and meditating and focusing, you know, we're on our second um, go round here and you go deeper. And so there's always some information to read about the countries, but it's, so it's again, it's about getting to know the countries on our planet. And I think it's a beginning. I think to me and the internet and this connectivity is allowing us to do this. The power of, I mean, I think what's really unique about the new group of world servers and esoterics is, is the, the power to meditate in group and the, the, uh, the power of that. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I've changed the slides, put in the next question uh, as yeah, Karen started talking about the things for the next right things for the World Service Group. So, um, so just to keep our flow going, but uh, at the same time, if anyone has any share on next right things for humanity or for us individuals so please one thing that i uh been in my focus in the recent weeks and probably more uh, is that in terms of the challenge that we as the world group, world service group facing now and I see it as might be getting even bigger is recognition of what is true. When DK talks about uh, the need for simultaneous unanimous meditation on the jurisdiction of the Christ, uh, he makes a note about unanimity that unanimity is in a recognition of what is true. And that allows that amazing power to flow through a group that can meditate in such format. But as we know, the challenge of misinformation and uh, challenge of, uh, if I may put this way, like alternative versions of what is true became such a, a huge issue for uh, humanity. And in many countries, that's an issue that influences political situations. And the United States is the big example of that. 
but I see the same uh, challenge unfolding within esoteric communities as well. There is no unanimity on some of the issues. Um, and so how we address that, how we deal with our differences of perceiving what is true in the outer manifestation. And I think for us, that's one of the things that we'll have to learn very quickly, how not to allow those different interpretations of what is true in the uh, manifested realm to divide us. Our goal uh, is to shift to the level where truth is recognized for what it is on the level of principles and laws and be united there. And that is a great service that we as, as a terrorist will have to deliver for humanity. And it's for us together to explore how to do that. Alexander? Yes, Darcy, please. May I segue off of, uh, of you? <laughs> um, segueing off of you in the sense of the, that what you speak, the Tibetans, is bringing forth the principles that unite uh, humanity. In 1945, the United Nations was formed and brought all nations under a unified agreement that they all desired peace. And that's how we began, under that united cry for peace that was able to go into the very depths and the hearts of the common man up to the world leaders. Peace, we know, is one of the things that will need to be present in some way, shape, or form, allowing the reappearance of the Christ. A sharing of economies is also what we will look for, the circulation of that. And a cleaning of house of our governmental and religious institutions which we see also happening. Looking for and uniting under the, under the things that unite us as world servers. Can we not agree, just as we did in 1945, that world peace is something that we all desire? It is something that we all aspire. And that would benefit humanity, regardless of our outward differences. I'm working from that place. And I would like to call forth into the consciousness that what was wanted and declared in the hearts of humanity for world peace, which led to our beautiful United Nations, that I want to honor that for the first time, and DK says that the United Nations would be the ones who guarded the nuclear power and the secrets that were released in their destructive form. That a treaty on the prohibita prohibition of nuclear weapons will come into force on January 22nd, because we had the 50th member state to ratify here recently. Now, mind you, it isn't any of the nations of NATO, but the fact that for the first time, 
we have a treaty established, declared, written, and grounded in some shape, way, or form, declaring that we prohibit those nuclear weapons only to be used, that nuclear energy to be used for the establishment and the furtherance of life. That is evidence that peace on earth is prevailing. And may we remind ourselves as we look and we see what isn't missing, that we also see what is present. And to look in the long history and to reaffirm and to relift our, our spiritual presence that we bring. Because as discussed, there are three ways the group has to work to Uta Gabi is that by looking inward, upwards, and outwards, and bringing the personality of our group into integration, bringing the chalice and the energy of a nation or our world through the soul as the silent watchers, and then holding that vision of what is best for the nation, the group, the world, and the most difficult process is the integration of our personality selves. But it is possible. And that actually when we bring that, that united effort of all that is um, uh, different within all the groups that we work with that we seem to be a little bit having a little hiccups right now of bringing ourselves into alignment. That when we, when we bring those differences together in a unified movement, that that is the most powerful force that we can bring as a group. When we bring our diversity into unity. And so holding that vision that we can, we can overcome our personalities and we will overcome our differences. And by that in itself, we will resonate that into the very essence of um, and ground that in that outward movement that has to be presented to the world in order to show the world how that is done energetically through our own personal living. And so my focus is on peace, and that is what's drawn my attention. And, and peace individually at a group, in nations, and in a, as, as a world. And, and bringing that into front as the Global Silent Minute, uh, that dedication to um, uh, unite uh, our groups in that global silent minute, which we used in World War II to end the Nazis' um, forward movement and to help facilitate the end of that axis of evil. We've we've been moved to bring that again to the forefront. So um, uh, I have nothing but the greatest faith in our ability to move forward, to overcome, and to advance humanity in, in um, our forward march for the reappearance of the Christ and the externalization of the hierarchy. Let there be light and love and power and the restoration of the plan. And we're living it now. And I think we're doing beautifully. And so let's keep just let's just keep moving forward. We can do this. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Darcy.
Claire, would you like to share? You unmuted. Uh, thanks, Asha. Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy, um, for what you just um, spoken into the group field. And um, I have this image in the Sagittarius time of the bow, of us drawing back the bow of the arrow with intention. And I can't not see the bow that is used with the intention of drawing music from a stringed instrument. Um, which is a different interface, I know, and and but feels somehow congruent with what we're talking about here and reflecting on as a group. It's an interface that um, implies that as we become more aligned within ourselves and within our service activities, that a certain music will arise, which is to say um, soul resonance. And there's a very beautiful film that's just been made that and released called The Bowmakers. And I'll put a link to it in the chat box because it speaks about um, the bow that is um, used to, to create music, but it's um, on an esoteric, many, um, it, it operates on many esoteric levels too. And I, um, I recommend it to you. Because um, what Sharon Deep was saying also is, is that what unifies us in our diversity is that we work together with our hands on our hearts with the intention of recognizing and affirming the soul qualities and the essential soul nature of each other. So while the instrument rests and is beautiful on its own, it um, springs to life the moment the bow is in alignment with the string, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's an unusual metaphor, I know, but... Um, I just, yeah, I wanted to share that. And, and also um, the passage from Glamour, um, a world problem, which covers a lot of what we've been saying together as a group today, which is, if I can read the quote uh, from page 150, um, it's about the spaces as well as the activity. And this is what DK says, we come and stand within the midst of whirling forms, some of beauty rare and some of horror and despair, we stand. We look not here or there, but with our faces turned towards the light, we stand. Through our minds, the pure light streams to dissipate the fogs. We come and rest. We cease our outer labors. Within our hearts is rest. We run not here and there, but constitute a point of peace and rest. From the heart at rest, a beam of dissipating force projects and blends with the shining light. We come and we observe. We own the eye of vision. Likewise, we own the right direction of the needed force. Through the eye of buddhi comes the power to drive away the veiling, swirling glamours. We stand, we rest, and we observe. Such are our lives, and such the service that we render to the souls of men. Thank you. Thank you, Claire.
there are several sharings in the in the chat um, uh, i invite us to read those uh, in our own and there also was a question about the link to the recording of our saturday session Daniela, if you could paste the link And the, we have the transcript of uh, Dot's sharing on Saturday. There, there are no transcripts uh, from Sheldon and Emant, but um, those are live sharing that's uh, come in the moment. And we invite you to listen to the recording and uh, connect with those ideas that's been placed in the group cellist on Saturday. And if anyone has any impressions to share on what are the next right things for us as individuals on our individual journeys, because the collective progress made out of our individual deeds and successes on the path and so that comes as the essential question at the end what each of us sees as the task ahead for the next year for the years before 2025 and much longer. If anyone would like to share anything or maybe let's bring us our focus to this question inwardly. I have just two brief comments, Alexander. Um, <clears throat> and one links back to building on what Darcy was saying about, about peace, United Nations in 1945 and where we stand today. And it links me to, to links me into two lines of thought. One is that, that um, When we begin to share our ideas and our resources for the, particularly these two great pandemics, well, one's a pandemic and one's a global warming challenge for us, it seems to me that the money will begin to flow automatically away from weapons, um, armorized arrows, you might say, that we, we still use on one another and will flow into those kinds of activities, which basically are built on cooperation. We will, we will find some ways through this. That, that free allocation of resources, I think, is, is not far in the future. On the individual level, we all know this. It's been mentioned by a number of, number of comments today and before. We, we, we stand always in the downflow of these energies that pour through us from greater beings. And as we stand with in the, in the flow and allow those to flow through us, through all the centers, and we notice what, notice any changes that begin to take place within us, how we respond and what strikes us, what we don't say anymore or what we begin to do. 
it seems to me that that kind of of recognition of what's happening draws attention to the through the heart mind connection in us to the soul that's getting a greater hold over the personality and so i just want to say that all of these all the work that goes on various workshops seminars that kind of thing i think are predicated on this standing in this downflow um, and being open to it and allowing those energies to to work their way to us and for us to as we express them notice what we are linked to what we begin to support withdraw support from and um it's not just my own ray nature I, there is a joy um that resounds and remains always easy to touch into so i'm for this continuous uh shower <laughs> showering in these these great energies and um bringing them forth through the the various specific activities which um, we are called to to address and bring forth. Thank you, Sheldon.
I'm I was trying to play music. I wasn't sure if it was playing. I was just going to write to you, but no, there was a little bit and then disappeared. Yes, yeah. I'm still learning this how to do the sharing properly, including sharing of music. Um, but I was trying to play uh, music by um, it's uh, David Darling. Um, beautiful composer. Um, as Sharon has to leave earlier and um, it's, that's been her teacher for a long time and she suggested that we use his music. Alexander, uh, the, yes, sound came, the sound came through beautifully uh, without the chalice on the screen. It was just the Zoom, um, the Zoom page, but the sound came through then quite beautifully. Thank you. Um, so if anyone wants to share anything, that music was kind of leading us to that uh, space of inner reflection. And so I think the time of our sharing uh, flowing closer to the time of meditation, but we still have time for sharing if anyone would like to put something into the chalice. To love, unspeakable love, all-encompassing love. Beauty. Beauty revealed, the beauty of the cosmos revealed on earth. All encompassing beauty. To tune or align to tune with that, to listen, see, trust, allow, observe, act in accordance as silent watchers. I choose to will thy will. Let love prevail. May all people love.
Let us bring now all our impressions to the group chalice. Preparing for meditation. link with our hearts and minds in the group center, group chalice. We focus there all our inspiration, our revelations and recognitions of what is the next right thing for humanity, for the world group, and for each of us individually. And we lift the chalice upwards. Offering it to the hierarchy of spiritual elders. Asking for a blessing in our journey and the guidance.
we turn towards humanity. Recognizing our path forward. And the work ahead of us. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. And we see the light shining forward for humanity, showing the way. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you, dear friends. And to close our work today, um, we will share a short video meditation. Um, it's prepared by Claire for us.